What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. And this is why you guys subscribe to this page. Many of you don't even know Michael Jordan retired from basketball. He quit in 1990. That's right. Michael Jordan quit basketball in 1990. The NBA, everything. He had made enough money. He was walking away from the game. What happened to cause Michael Jordan to quit professional basketball in the year of 1990? Well, we go to this to 19. 90 when it starts like the, the 89 90 season so when we're looking at it we're saying to ourselves hmm new bulls team and michael's looking at it there's no we got phil we just went the furthest we've ever went before now, this year, we should be able to get to the NBA Finals. The team that beat us won the NBA championship. We can get them. We know how to compete with the Detroit Pistons. We can beat them. So going into that season of 1990, they had some successful games against the Pistons. And they had some games in which the Pistons beat them. Then, everything turned around. The playoffs is coming around. Michael's really confident. He led the league in scoring again. And he feels really good that the team has figured it out. They're mentally tough. They're ready. Michael felt we are ready to take down Detroit. So the playoff starts and they run into obstacles very little. Like they the other teams are not even compatible as they run up against the 76ers with Hershey Hawkins, Johnny Dawkins, Charles Barkley, and Rick Mahorn. Now, the last year, Rick Mahorn was with the Detroit Pistons, and they played against Mike. So when they playing in this game, I mean, Jordan and Pippen said, we got them. Let's swarm on them. So they were just like off the chain aggressive. You know, they were all over the place. And they were in sync. Like this was this was the moment where they were like, okay, we got something very good here. We got a you know, we finna, we're going all the way. But Detroit was the number one team in the East. They had home court throughout. And they had won their last 24 out of 25 games <clears throat> to end the NBA season. They had won like 12 in a row. Lost one and went on another 13 game winning streak. Detroit had found their niche by putting Dennis Rodman in the starting lineup. Now, Michael was saying to himself, All right, we know what to do. We played them before. Let's get in here and get a steal in Detroit. They go into the hostile crowd of Detroit and 
the game one goes down and during the game, you know, the Bulls, you know, they get just clobbered in game one. The defense was too much. The second game. Scotty couldn't answer the call. Bill Cartwright couldn't answer the call. Edwards is bodying him up. The Bulls are getting manhandled. Michael's trying to do more than he can to lead the charge, but he needs some of these guys to step up. Horace was trying his best. Things weren't really going their way. Scotty was an all-star that year, and... You know, he was feeling himself a lot because of the first half of the season he was great, but had a terrible second half of the season. And he kind of digressed once he played against Detroit as Dennis Rodman did anything he wanted with uh, with Scottie Pippen. Then he would alternate on Horace Grant and Michael Jordan. He would switch off and guard all three guys. Dennis Rodman was the greatest athlete probably playing in the NBA in history. No one was as athletic as Dennis with that kind of energy level. They hadn't seen it. Now, What Dennis Rodman was able to do was frustrate the rest of the the Detroit, I mean, the rest of the Chicago Bulls. So on the way back to Chicago down 0-2, you know, Michael told him, gave him a speech, told him, hey, we got this. Don't worry about it. We, we, we're right here. We're on the cusp. We just need guys to step up. We're going to be at home. We're going to defend. Michael's pumped, and he's confident because he's like, we win the next game, we can get in this series. All it takes winning game three. They blow the Pistons out in game three. Game four, much of the same. Blow them out the water. They're running up and down the court. Everybody's cheering. Michael didn't score like 40-some points. Hitting threes, he's he's all over the place. Everybody's excited. Michael is pumped because now he believes we got him. We got Detroit. This is our series now. We got it. Game five is us. So they take the bus back to Detroit. They get off the bus. Michael's pumped. I mean pumped because he know we got. Him. Mike's like, oh, the doubts in their mind. All the pressure's on them. They the defending champ. Pressure's on them. So Michael came out, and the Bulls came out aggressive. Pistons couldn't pull away from the Bulls in this game. Boris Grant stepped up big time in the first half. Bulls was doing their thing. Third quarter came around, and... Bulls is what rolling. Then the experience level kicked in. And they couldn't sustain. They were just hoping time ran out and they had the lead. Well, the Pistons was basically keeping the game manageably close. And when it was time, they put the Bulls away. But it was close. So when they won that game and had a 3-2 lead, they went to Chicago to try to close them out. Michael was not deterred. And Scotty, Michael, Boris, Cartwright, they blew the Pistons out of the water. It was a, just a slaughter. And the game was going back for a game set. Michael is ecstatic. He goes up. He tells everybody, we got him. We got him. This is it. 
He was so pumped for Game 7. Michael couldn't even contain himself. His dad was trying to get Michael to calm down. And Rod Higgins had came up to, to hang out with Mike. You know, Rod Higgins is like one of Mike's friends. So, Mike had a lot of people there and they was going to go to Detroit, watch the game. You know, this was going to be it. And Michael came into the game seven. And the Bulls did. And right before that, Scotty's like, man, I don't feel good. He was like, oh, that's just nerves. You'll shake it off once the game starts. Scotty's like, no, I don't feel good. He's got talking with the trainers. It's like, something's wrong with Scotty. Like, he's got a, a, a major headache. They're like, what? Yeah, Scotty's got what they call a migraine. He's like, Scotty got a migraine headache. Well, he could take some aspirin. So he got some aspirin and it wasn't working. He had nothing he could do. The pressure on the side of his head was killing. And was like, I got a monster migraine. I don't know. It just came out of nowhere. And Michael was disgusted. And Michael was going into this game and Michael was completely completely disgusted and he's in there going off in the room he ain't talked to Scott he went into the room telling his pops he's soft he's scared he's scared man we better not lose this game because of this so Scotty's like no nah, I'm gonna play I'm gonna play and he told him we got this they they scared of us like you'll see when the game start you'll start feeling better when we have them on the ropes, we got them. We just got to close the door. We got them. So, the game starts. It's going back and forth. It's a close game. Early on, Michael's not going to relent anything. But the Bulls was playing on borrowed time. The Pistons had controlled the style of the game. They know at home... They could slow the game down, play at their tempo, speed it up when they want to speed it up. And that's what was basically happening. Is the Bulls, they were scoring, but it was more sporadic than it was anything else. So Tex Winters is over there, and he's... Like, watching Michael force some shots. And he's like, oh, my gosh. So Michael and Tex Winter start yelling at each other on the sideline. Over the direction, because Scotty had to come out of the game. And they had to bring in Stacey King. And, you know, they kept alternating people into the game for Scotty, who had this headache with this ice pack on his head, trying to get his head back clear. As he couldn't hit a shot, he couldn't hit a layup. His equilibrium was off and everything else. So Michael's disgusted. So Michael's like, I got to come out here and do this. If I don't, we wouldn't even be in the game right now. So Michael abandoned the game plan that they had while the game was going on. The game was Michael was going to, they were going to slow the game down, move the ball, get some of the other guys involved, and then down the stretch, Michael could start taking the game over. But when they were falling down by like four or five or six and Scotty had to come out the game, Michael went back to, I'm going to just do it all myself. And he fell into that trap. And he basically neglected the team. And when that happened, and they couldn't get a stop on the Pistons, but then they were struggling to score, and the Pistons were scoring so easily. It was a it was a matter of time before they imploded. And then Michael said, screw them. Screw the coaches. Screw everybody. We got to get it done ourselves. And it turned into a rap. That game became a game of celebration for the Detroit Pistons. As the lead ballooned up to 20, Michael was just out there by himself. 
and the rest of the team has shut down and Michael didn't speak to anybody he's in the back room he's so seething mad he takes a shower and does his interview he congratulates everybody he gets on the bus he sits on that bus and the rest of the teammates get us on the bus and he just started laying into everybody feels like I want to thank you guys you know again we had a great season we were, you know, I love you guys. You guys played it great. It's my first season as head coach. One game for the NBA Finals. You know, I'll take it. And Michael Jordan was like, I don't take it. We should be in the fight. And he's like, what happened today is the worst MFing feeling I ever had in my MFing life. You MFers quit. If you don't want to effing play, don't effing get in the game. Stay your effing A at home. Don't even make the trip. I don't want to play. I don't want you on the court if you're not going to play. If you don't, you can't compete and you mentally can't bang or hang with Detroit, I don't need you on the court. So I'll talk to management. I'll talk to ownership and we can see about Taking sending y'all someplace where they don't care about what to make y'all happy or F it. I'll just walk away from the game. So Bill Cartwright got in his face. You what kind of leader is you? Huh? What kind of leader is you? You supposed to be out there, you trying to score every night, you abandon the team. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So Michael was about to punch Bill Cartwright right in his mouth. Scotty's sitting there with a pack of ice on his head. He ain't saying a word. Horace Grant had to get in between Michael and, and Bill Cartwright. And Jordan's father came on there and grabbed Michael. Michael! Michael! He had to get him under control because Michael's yelling and cussing. So his daddy had the only one that could calm Jordan down. So on the bus, nobody talked. Nobody spoke. And even though it was the team bus, Michael Father rode with Michael in there. So Mike told Rod Higgins, man, I'm out. I quit. I'm going to tell them right now, if they don't get rid of these guys, I'm out. I'm going to quit. I'm, I'm quitting, Rod. I ain't finna keep sitting here losing in Detroit every year when we can beat them. I quit. And this was this is in 1990, April of 1990. Michael Jordan said he quit. I quit. I go do something else. I quit before if they, if they gonna say we're just happy with getting here and and losing. I I'll quit. I quit right now. Rob was like, man, you ain't got to do that, man. I'll come back and play with you. He's like, man, my, you know, it's up here, my contract. And, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to bring me back or not, but I could, I'll come side with y'all. Mike loved that idea. He was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, we'll give it one more run. Well, I'll give it another year because if we, if we lose to Detroit another year, I'm, I'm, I'm out. Michael Jordan had quit. He went and met with Jerry and uh, uh, Jerry Reinsdorf. And Jerry Krause was, he told tell Jerry that we want to get Rod Higgins. They didn't get Rod Higgins. And Rod was like, man, the Bulls didn't contact my agent. He's been reaching out to him, And they signed Cliff Livingston in the summer. Michael Jordan told the Chicago Bulls, I would quit. I quit. That's it. They were like, Michael, think it over. You're not going to quit. Cliff Livingston is a player. He's going to, don't don't quit, Michael. You, you're going to regret that. Don't go out there and say you quit. So my agent, David Falk, was like, Michael's serious about walking away from the game. 
right now, like before the start of the 1991 season, why you couldn't get Rod Higgins? You could easily pick up Rod Higgins. And they was like, well, tell Michael, don't quit. It's not set in stone that we're not going to get Rod Higgins. We can get him later on in the season. And he's like, when the season starts and everything else, we can pick up Rod Higgins. And he's like, but right now, we got guys on here with contracts. So if somebody get hurt or injured, we could we can, you know, make the deal for Rod. So Michael bought it and he kept pitching it in his interviews all season long. Yeah, you know, we had a guy like Rod Higgins. We had a guy like Rod Higgins on the team, you know, Michael was championing. And to this day, Rod Higgins and Michael Jordan are best friends. He was a uh, former president of the Charlotte Hornets. His son, what's his name, Corey Higgins. Corey Higgins is on the um, Charlotte Hornets right now. Very close. Very close still to this day. But yep, Michael Jordan retired. In 1990, he quit basketball only to come right back. <laughs> so he never officially retired. He quit basketball by saying he quit. But he ended up playing anyway. him. But if they didn't win it in 91, Mike was out. And I believed him. 